My name is Eric Hanscom. I have a proposal to restore the Salton Sea and I'd like to present it here. My proposal has two basic components. First off, uh, now there are a lot of proposals that involve bringing seawater into the Salton Sea, but these proposals all have one canal or one pipeline that basically brings in salt water and dumps it into the Salton Sea to raise the level of the Salton Sea back to its former level so that the playa, that is the section of the Salton Sea that's currently uncovered, is not exposed to the winds such that the toxic dust clouds that we have to deal with right now are no longer created. My proposal calls for two channels or two pipelines. However you're going to bring in the water into the Salton Sea, we have another that takes the water out. These are staggered, so the input is at one end, the output is in the, at the other end. Therefore, the newer seawater comes into the Salton Sea and gradually moves toward the end from which the old seawater is being sucked out. This does a couple of things. First of all, it keeps the salinity relatively constant so that you can reintroduce the game fish and the other things that made the Salton Sea uh, a more visited park than Yosemite in the early 1960s. The second thing is that by bringing in a constant source of seawater, you can raise the seawater level in the Salton Sea so that it does cover up the playa. The second part of my proposal involves building berms at the current level of the Salton Sea. Now, we would have solar powered pumps that when the sunlight was on would be turned on and would pump seawater from the Salton Sea into holding ponds that would cover the, the current playa. Uh, these would operate during the day when the sunlight was supplying solar power. At night, uh, the solar panels obviously wouldn't be working anymore, so computer controlled drains would open and drain the water from the holding ponds back into the Salton Sea. This would allow a couple of things. First of all, you'd use less water to keep the playa wet than you would under the proposals that just call for the Salton Sea to be refilled to its previous level. The second thing is that by alternately submerging and exposing um, a sandy bottom, you create a wonderful environment for an intertidal zone. And many people know the intertidal zone is one of the most productive in the ocean. And so by creating our own intertidal zones. We'd be enhancing the marine life, helping the ecosystem, as well as providing food for a number of the game fish that would hopefully bring back the sports people and bring the Salton Sea back to being a very popular park. So let me try to explain this through a couple of uh, short cartoons here. So in the first one here, we see that the Salton Sea has a balance between the evaporation, which equals x, and the river water that comes in, which equals x as well. And so up until about 1990, the evaporation was pretty much evenly balanced by the runoff from the three rivers that empty into the Salton Sea combined with the agricultural runoff. However, starting in the 1990s, the water into the Salton Sea was less and less and the evaporation remained the same and as a result the boundaries of the Salton Sea began to shrink exposing a section of the lake bed that's shown here in white called the playa. This slide shows a couple of things. First of all, uh, from 1905 until around the 1990s the level of the Salton Sea remained relatively constant because the amount of water coming in through the rivers and agricultural runoff approximately equaled the amount that was being lost through evaporation. However, starting in the 1990s, uh, less water was allowed into the Salton Sea, so the water level uh, decreased substantially. The second thing that this um, illustration shows is how when the Salton Sea was first formed, there were just a few little uh, toxic particles at the bottom of the Salton Sea, but over time, more and more water containing these toxic particles came off of the agricultural lands. And so the concentration of toxic particles on the bottom of the Salton Sea grew and grew because although the evaporation took fresh water out of the Salton Sea, it didn't take out the toxic particles. So the next slide shows how with a terminal lake such as the Salton Sea, fresh water evaporates and leaves behind the salt, thereby building up a higher and higher salinity in the water. So we see in this slide how the toxic particles on the bottom of the Salton Sea 
have increased over time. In 1905, there weren't very many of them because uh, there wasn't a whole lot of agricultural runoff. By the 1970s, the number had increased because the, you now had 70 years of agricultural runoff. And by the year 2000, the bottom had a nice little, well, I guess not so nice little coating of these minerals that had collected there. Now, we can also see that by the year 2000, the level of the salt and sea had receded, such as uh, a lot of these toxic particles were now exposed to the wind. And so when the wind came by and uh, picked up any dust that was on the ground, it also picked up toxic, toxic particles and blew them up into the air, which is one reason why the air around the salt and sea is some of the worst in the country and why children in uh, communities surrounding the salt and sea have approximately four times greater asthma rate as does the child in the average city. My proposal is fairly simple, and that is that um, we have essentially two pipelines or two channels that bring in water and take water back to the ocean. Uh, the first channel comes in at one end of the salt and sea and pumps in, um, shall we say, fresh seawater, and at the other end, the stagnant seawater is removed through a second channel or pump. The next slide shows how when the water is delivered to the Salton Sea, it's going to be delivered from pipelines that are elevated above the level of the Salton Sea. This will cause the water to be aerated, which will be very good for the fish and other wildlife that will be living in the Salton Sea. As new seawater is dumped into one end of the Salton Sea, it'll gradually replace the currently stagnant uh, high salinity water that will be removed from the other end of the Salton Sea. With new salt water replacing the existing water in the Salton Sea, after several years, the salinity in the Salton Sea will remain the same. So we've got years one, two, and three, and you notice how the salinity remains the same because fresh seawater is pumped into the Salton Sea, retaining the salinity of seawater, as opposed to the current Salton Sea, which has a salinity about one and a half times that of seawater because there's no output other than through evaporation. The next slide illustrates how the berm can separate the Salton Sea into a Salton Sea side, which is to the left side of the berm, and to a playa side, which is to the right side. Now when the sun comes out, it activates the solar panels, and which, which then power the pumps, and the pumps pump water from the Salton Sea side to the playa side, covering up the playa. At the end of the day, the sun goes away, the solar pumps stop working, and a computer-controlled drain opens up and allows the water to drain from the, ber the, uh, the berm side back down to the Salton Sea side. This creates intertidal zones on either side of the berm with both the salt and sea side and the berm side uh, or the playa side being flushed and unflushed once a day. As I mentioned earlier, the intertidal zones are some of the most productive in the world, so this would be very beneficial to the salt and sea to have two such zones with one on either side of the berm. Now another advantage of intertidal zones is that mangroves can grow there. And mangroves are a very, very useful plant for intertidal zones in that, first of all, uh, they form a virtually impenetrable forest of branches and roots and trunks uh, to the point where even when it's hot outside and in the, around the Salton Sea, you can get 115 degrees in the summer, well, the leaves will shade the soil from the sun, and so uh, they'll also protect it from the wind. So if you've got... Uh, you know, a typical summer day where it's 115 degrees, you've got a 20 knot wind. By the time you get down to the, the actual uh, soil surface, you've got maybe a 75 degree temperature and maybe a three knot wind. So this will prevent desiccation and it will prevent turning the soil back into, uh, you know, a bunch of little toxic particles it can be easily picked up by the wind. So at, once we have the berm established, the berm being number 17 in this figure, we can divide up the playa area into a number of different um, holding ponds. And some of these holding ponds can be used for commercial things such as uh, shrimp, maybe uh, salt harvesting. 
Others can be experimental, perhaps to try to develop a species of tilapia that's very resistant to salt, um, and others can be turned over to universities and other research organizations who'd like to do some experiments. But we divide them into the holding ponds by using the same material from which we make the berm and making uh, perpendicular lines to the berm. We can even extend some of these lines out into the Salton Sea and create things like eco lodges or marinas that will further enhance the recreational opportunities that the new Salton Sea will afford. This first slide shows the three main proposed routes to bring seawater into the Salton Sea. At the lower uh, right, we have a route that comes up from the Sea of Cortez. In the middle, a route either over the Laguna Mountains or through the Laguna Mountains from San Diego. And to the north, there's a route from Los Angeles through Palm Springs. This figure shows that if the input into the Salton Sea is dropped into the Salton Sea from a suitable elevation, it will provide very aerated seawater, which will be a welcome addition to the Salton Sea right now because the water is not well aerated and instead is very stagnant. So you've got a pipeline that's elevated through some support structures 12. The water 13 is dropped from a suitable ed, uh, elevation such that the seawater in the Salton Sea is highly aerated. This slide shows how the water can be pumped during daylight from the uh, Salton Sea side of the berm, the berm here being 17. There's a hose, 23, that goes down deep into the Salton Sea, and the solar panel, 18, is activated by the sunlight. That turns on a pump, 19, that then pulls water from the depths of the Salton Sea through the hose, 23, and deposits it on the playa side, that is 16, of the berm. This is a close-up of the pump. Uh, you've got a solar panel, 18, that powers the pump. The pump then brings in a quantity of seawater, number 13, from the Salton Sea through the hose 23 that goes to the deeper regions of the Salton Sea. Uh, the berm itself is 17, and there's a drain 20 that is computer controlled so that once the sun goes down, the drain can be opened and water from the right side of the berm can be drained back to the left side of the berm. This figure shows a sequence of the solar panel working to power the pump and pulling water from the Salton Sea side of the berm to the playa side of the berm. So how is the berm going to be created? Well, I propose that they use the same bulldozers that are currently being used to put furrows all over the uh, playa and use those instead to scrape up the top three or four inches of the current playa and turn it into a berm. You can also use the same technology to build the islands that will be used for the uh, bird nests, the berm here being 17 and the islands being 24. So once the berm is created, the berm being 17, a variety of holding ponds, 25, can be created by having arms, 26, extend radially, radially from the berm to the current edge of the playa. And these holding ponds can be flooded and unflooded periodically with the solar pumps and the computer controlled drains. You can even extend some of the radial arms out into the center of the salt and sea to create things like marinas 27 and eco lodges 28. Some of the berms can be made wide enough for everything from hikers to automobiles. This figure shows how that by creating an intertidal zone on either side of the berm 17, through the use of mangrove swamps, we can create bird islands that will be protected from land-based predators, both on the Salton Sea side, that is the left side, and on the berm side, which is the right side of the berm. This is an aerial view of the previous slide showing that uh, depending on whether it's high tide or low tide, the islands will either be uh, inundated by seawater up to the edge or they'll be left dry. But again, having a mangrove swamp there will protect the bird nests from being raided by land-based predators. 
So I realize that this has been a fairly technical and fairly dry explanation of what can be done to restore the Salton Sea. So let me close just by offering you a few stills and videos of what the Salton Sea is all about to me. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.